So here I have a new, well, at least new to me, uh, Hewlett Packard 53310A modulation domain analyzer. It's kind of a unique piece of equipment. And I have a few options on it. One of the options is option 10, which is the high stability oven uh, control crystal oscillator. It uses the HP 10811 um, oscillator, which is a, a very good, a very stable, uh, very clean. Uh, reference and uh, I intentionally uh, tuned it a little bit off frequency. You can see on here my uh, 53132A counter, it's uh, the reference oscillator is a little bit low, and I'm referencing this against my BG7 TBL uh, DPS uh, discipline oscillator, which is also feeding through uh, BG7 TBL uh, 10 megahertz distribution. Uh, amp and on uh, my oscilloscope here, I'm syncing off of channel four, which is from the 10 meg distribution amplifier, and channel one is coming from the reference output of the modulation domain anal analyzer, and then feeding to the input of my frequency counter. The frequency counter is also you notice right here external reference is being uh, referenced off of my GPS DO. Now. One of the problems with frequency counters, now the, the more modern counter like this um, can very quickly give you more digits of resolution at a very fast time base, but you still, in order to get more precision, have to increase the time base some. And I can get, uh, what, 10 digits here in one second? Let's see, what is that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, zero, 3, 6, 9, 10, 11 digits in one second. Eh, not bad, but you see it's still jumping around a little bit and it's more stable than that, so let's make this 10 seconds. And this will give me a much, I still have to wait now 10 seconds uh, per uh, per gate uh, to get uh, a better idea of uh, stability and, and, and really get um, a better accuracy uh, that I'm looking for. Now it makes it very difficult waiting 10 seconds per adjustment um, of course, you can always use the old scope sync method and, and tune it to where uh, the the patterns are, are, are locked together and not drifting. But let's let's go ahead and utilize the modulation domain analyzer and its ability to uh, graphically show you the frequency and use it as a, as a frequency counter as well. So I have it completely uh, not set up at all for what I want to do. So I'll show you the process of basically getting it set up. And so we're just going to take, this is a, uh, another output from my 10 meg distribution amplifier. Plug this in here. And just to get a quick setup, we'll hit auto scale. Okay, so it gives it a real quick setup. A few things like on, under input, it sets um, the voltage threshold, 50% voltage threshold. It sets up a few things and, and gets, and gets the unit basically set up quickly for you, sets the center frequency uh, to whatever frequency you're feeding into it. In this case, it happens to be 10 meg. So let's just go over to histogram, turn that into histograms, go to fast histogram, and then number of measurements. Let's just make that one. And then let's zoom in a little bit here for, so, sorry, I'm back up so you can see the buttons I'm push, pushing. So um, vertical, let's make this, um, a little more fun. Let's go down to one hertz. There we go. And we want under histogram. Let's turn accumulation off. And then marker. Let's turn a marker on. Let's turn a marker on at. Uh, see your marker. Marker. Oh, is there on? Is there, oh, here we go. Then we want to make this 10 megahertz here. Uh, megahertz. 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 That one. We'll make that one same 10 megahertz. Okay, so now I got a marker here at 10 megahertz, and we see the the, the jumping around quite a bit. Well, if we go over to sample, and let's turn it off auto. Let's make this 0.1 second. There we go. That's a little more stable. So now we got a visual representation of the time base on this is a little low, as you can see up here, and so hence it's reading the frequency a little high. Now on the back of the unit, you can see right back there, that little bulge sticking out the back, that's the um, 
HP 10 811 uh, oven controlled Chris oscillator and I got my little tuning stick plugged in there so I'm gonna grab a hold of that and we're just gonna try to get this guy back on frequency here oh that's the wrong way let's go this way you can see getting a little closer a little closer a little closer right about there now that's pretty good that was pretty fast a lot faster than waiting for that thing to update now we also notice on the uh, scope eh, it looks pretty solid well, let's zoom in some more because the beauty behind this instrument is it's, it's a lot of people call it a frequency microscope and you can really zoom in and see what it's doing so let's go back to the vertical menu one hertz it's a uh, one hertz span so let's go 100 millihertz span Oh, look at that, I'm a little off. Okay, so let's let's tune it in a little bit, a little bit more here. Uh, just finite touch. That's pretty close. Let's zoom in a little bit more. Okay, and let's also increase the sample right here from 100 milliseconds. Let's make it 200 milliseconds, make it a little more stable there. And then let's go back to the vertical menu and Let's just make this 50 millihertz, so 0.05 hertz span. It's pretty good. Let's zoom in a little bit more. You can also use the knob here. So let's go ahead and set it's 20 millihertz span. Let's go down 10 millihertz span. There we go. We're getting nitty gritty. Now, how far off is this frequency? Easily, I mean, it's hard to, to tell just looking down here. You can also look at the mean. Uh, down here, and since I'm I'm not um, a, a, averaging and doing a history accumulation, whatever every one reading is this reading down here. So let's um, it's kind of hard to, to to read that. So but what we can do is the markers. Let's take marker frequency B, turn the fine tune on, and let's just roll it over there. So we can see the difference of the delta from 10 megahertz is 256 microhertz. So it's averaging about 256 microhertz high. It's a lot easier to, to read the, the delta from the marker than it is to read this down here. Uh, but let's make this really nitty gritty. Let's go instead of, let's go to the maximum um, sample uh, interval, 500 milliseconds make it as stable as possible. You can see I'm pretty much averaging almost exactly 10 megahertz. Let's go back to my markers. Let's, let's zero this one out again. 10 uh, megahertz, that button. Okay, and then let's go over here to my vertical, see your span. Let's make this one millihertz. Well, we can just use the dial here. It's eight, seven, six, five, four, three. Four, two, one. One millihertz span. And we can see it off over here. And how far off is that? Let's see your marker, marker two. Let's uh, swing over there. So it looks like it's averaging a little low. By about 200. Uh, we're 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 nitty gritty. We're we're in the we're in the mi hundreds of microhertz, a couple hundred microhertz right now, uh, back and forth, which is eh, pretty finite, but gives you a really fast idea of where you're at visually, well beyond the capabilities of of trying to sync it with the uh, the oscilloscope, and much faster, and also even at a greater resolution. That's um, 100 microhertz and we're reading a couple digits beyond this and that's a 10 uh, second count so this can be used as a, as a very quick very fast frequency counter and uh, show you uh, finite resolution beyond that of even good high-end frequency counters so am I going to try to tweak this a little bit more probably but uh, that's enough for the video that's a just to quick show you something you can do with one of the modulation domain analyzers. Um, pretty neat piece of equipment. They can be found very inexpensively on eBay. 
I think I paid $250 for this one. It's in good shape, fully functional, included option 31, which is the uh, uh, channel C, which is the two and a half gig um, input. And uh, it's also known as the digital communication um, option. Let's see here, if I go utilities, uh, self-test menu, um, the only thing I'm missing is the extended memory. I actually found the memory I needed um, from Hi-Fi IC on eBay, and I have the memory on order. It was like $2.50 a chip, need four chips. Um, and uh, so I have channel C, and then the RF communications. Those two are option 31. Option 10 is the oven oscillator, and then option 01 would be the extended memory. And that just gives you um, a, de a deeper um, field in the panorama view. Uh, up top, which, how useful is that? Who knows? Um, anyways, back to display. Neat piece of gear. Um, it looks like I've drifted a little bit outside my, my window. So vertical span, let's up the span a little bit. 10 millihertz span. Let's see where I'm at, there I'm at. So I'll tweak the, the fine tune the frequency a little bit more. Anyways, something kind of neat. Very uh, unique and different piece of equipment. Thanks. Bye.